Hello. Welcome to Friday with Fustinis. I'm Jim. This is Mallory. Uh, and we're going to focus on recipes today that have to do with apples. Uh, it's fall. It's fun. Fun time to, with Fustinis to uh, celebrate transitioning recipes to fall uh, flavors. But first, I want to announce that we uh, finalized our fundraising with food gatherers in Ann Arbor and uh, raised $8,400 uh, over the last three months, submitted a check to them on Monday or Tuesday of this week. Thanks to everybody who participated with donations on Facebook and uh, good luck to food gatherers with their mission to, to improve community health through all these pantries they have in the Ann Arbor area. We're really happy to do that to celebrate our 10th anniversary in the Ann Arbor store. Woohoo! Bravo. bravo. Yes. So without further ado, let's go to Denise in Holland with a dish she's doing with apples. Hey, thanks, Jim. So I have my pan um, warming up and I just added our sage and wild mushroom olive oil. So to my pan, I'm going to add some diced up onion. Um, I don't think the recipe, recipe specifies which kind of onion. I had some red ones already cut up. So I'm going to use those. And this is going to be a really easy recipe to pull together. Um, it does use wild rice, which does take a little bit of time to make. It takes about 45 to 50 minutes for the, you know, for you to boil and have it simmer for a half hour. And then it sits um, and just sits in the water to get softened. And then you can pick and choose how soft you want that rice to be, which for today's recipe, I let it sit for the full additional um, 25 minutes. So it's gonna be really soft, but there's still gonna be enough crunch left to it. So um, yeah, it'll be a perfect addition to this dish. So I've got my onion sauteing, and then to that, I'm going to add some sliced up mushrooms. And we're just gonna to start to get those to brown up. Turn it up a little bit. So while that's cooking, I just wanted to highlight a couple things. Um, we have a um, new product called Virtual Olive Oil Tasting Kit. Since we're still not allowed to taste in the store, we would like to show you and have you experience the amazing qualities of the new Chilean olive oil. So we've put together this little kit. Basically you purchase the kit. It's got some times and dates in there where you can sign up for um, one of the Zoom classes at your convenience. And we're just gonna do, it's just 30 minutes, quick go through and taste them. And hopefully you get to see the different nuances and characteristics. We talk about, um, you know, how this first crush olive oil is made and why it's different and why it's so special. We'll tell you different kinds of um, recipes and foods to use it with, um, from ice cream to dark chocolate, um, lots of different variations in there in ways to use them. So that is on our website. You can sign up for that. I think there are also kits in the store to purchase but it's completely on Zoom, the experience. And I know, I'm pretty sure that there was somebody who bought a kit today that they are having a dinner party. So they're hoping to jump into a Zoom and do this together as a bunch of friends, which I thought was pretty cool. So I've got my mushrooms starting to get dark. So to this, I'm going to add some of our Michigan apple balsamic. And that is just going to deglaze my pan. 
gonna pull up all that bits of flavor. It's actually gonna caramelize on the onions and mushrooms a little bit. So we'll give that a minute. And while we do that, I need to cut up an apple. So I never knew how to cut an apple before and this is actually Chef Andy's technique, which I love. So um, this is how he did it and it's kind of how I do it now. So we're gonna cut up this apple and then add that when the um, balsamic is kind of rendered down a little bit. We're also gonna add some kale and we're gonna add some um, chicken that already cooked chicken sausage to it. So I think this one that I purchased was red pepper and Asiago. So I think that was gonna go really well with apples. And basically you just kind of put that all in together and um, then serve it up. So we'll get these apples all cut. Well, yeah, if you have any questions about um, the tasting kit, um, feel free to either comment um, on the Facebook Live. Um, my email address is on the website with the kit. So you can just, just shoot me an email if you have any questions. So most of the balsamic is gone. There's just a little bit left in there. And what I'm going to do is add that. And then I have some chopped up kale. And I'm going to add, and actually I'm gonna save a little bit of kale just for the top. Um, sometimes if you forget about it, the kale gets way too wilty or wilted, I guess. And so um, this is a way just to keep it nice and bright. So was that kind of just gets all warm together. I just want to make sure I put everything in there. Salt and pepper, which is always important. Put some of that in there. And then sage, I did not have any fresh sage. So um, we're just gonna have to forego that this time. But this is gonna be nice. I'm gonna, oh, with the wild rice, hello. I thought that looked different. So this is how you can see a lot of the white has popped through. So that, to me, that tells me it's gonna be more soft and tender than hard and woody. So we're gonna add that. And really, um, if you don't want to use wild rice, and I know wild rice is hard to find in Michigan, um, a staple for Minnesota, but hard to find in Michigan, feel free to use another grain. I mean, you could use orzo, you could use white rice, you could use quinoa, anything like that, just to give it a little um, crunchiness to it. So this is my first dish, super easy to throw together once you've got the wild rice made. So that's what I have for my first one, Jim. Awesome, Denise, thank you. Hey, quick shout out to Mary Callisto. I'm here with Mallory. Hey, Mary. Uh, and Mallory now is gonna show a fun little salad, a salad with, she'll tell you about it. Apples, apples and endives. I so, think we do we pronounce it endives or endives? I say endives, but endives. I say endives. So to each their own, I guess. Yeah. Um, so today we're gonna make an endive apple and celery salad with smoked almonds and cheddar cheese. It will be delicious. Um, so what we started with, we've got two honey crisp apples here. Also, fun fact, honey crisps are were created at the University of Minnesota. So go gophers. So we've got two honey crisp apples here. I sliced them finely on the mandolin. Um, we then put them in a bowl with about three cups of water and one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. We're using Fustini's Pinot Grigio. So those soaked 
I put them in about probably 30 minutes ago. We've drained them and then patted them dry as best we could. So we have those delicious apples. For the dressing, it's super simple. We're gonna have two teaspoons of um, whole grain Dijon. We found this one at the grocery store today from Stone Brewery, which is here in San Diego. So I figured that would be fun to try. So two teaspoons. Then we have a quarter teaspoon of salt. Put that in there. And then a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. You could also use champagne vinegar too, but this is what I grabbed in the cupboard. We've got a shout out from Jillian Greaves in the chat. Oh, hey, Jillian. Thanks for watching. Hey, Jillian. Hi, Jill. Okay. So we'll whisk this up and then dad, actually you could assist me if you'd like. Uh, I'd love to. Um, we're gonna do a third of a cup of olive oil. Okay. And of course we're gonna use Rossini's. So the one that my dad selected is- It's the Koroneki, I believe. Yeah, Koroneki. This is the new select oil from Chile. Uh, that's a medium flavored oil. You're, you're confident in your measuring skills here? I am, just okay. watch me. It, it may be slow, a, little, a slow drizzle. Slow drizzle. It may be a little liberal third of a cup. Look at that color, though. Can you see the green, Katie? You can sure see can. That, huh? All this right. is fresh, first harvest. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah, you can really honestly smell yeah. the, the oil. Even through the mustard and the vinegar, it smells really good and fresh. Okay, so we are going to put some apples on there. I think our proportions are a little bit off. We have a lot of apples, so we're just going to kind of eyeball it. Um, I'm sure if we cut these a little bit thicker, it, it would have seemed a little more ripe, but these are so good. This is Honeycrisp is my favorite apple. Um, in the fall, I love to dip it in peanut butter. <laughs> it's so good. Always super crispy. Okay, that's probably good. And then I also have some celery. I also did this on the mandolin because I love the mandolin. Um, so we're going to put some of that in there. So it's going to be a nice, crispy, crunchy, fresh salad, which will be really good. You've also got a shout out from the River House from Nancy and Samantha. Woo -woo. Nice. Hello, ladies. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to put in here is some smoked almonds. So I chopped those up just, what's the word I'm looking for? Roughly. Yes, nothing perfect. Okay. That looks about right. And then I have some aged cheddar. This is aged three years. And um, it says to do it on a box grater on the slicing side. So we actually used a vegetable peeler. And I think that worked awesome. Nice. Angie's favorite cheese. Aged cheddar. She loves her some aged cheddar. Yeah. How do you feel about cheddar in an apple pie? Mm, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and pour some of this on the salad here. And then we're gonna give this a light toss. Mm, it smells so good. Yeah, the color of that is awesome. Well, and our handy dandy tongs. Probably could have picked a better bowl, but that's okay. Mmm, it smells good. Okay, so we'll give this a rough toss here, get everything kind of incorporated together. Yum. I think the crunch of the almond is going to be super delicious. It mm -hmm. looks really good. Mm 
but it's just a crunchy salad. Yep. Okay, I'll add a little more cheese on there because I don't think we got enough. Fun fact, Mr. Fustini's nickname is Uncle Crunchy in the family, so this is a perfect salad for him. Perfecto. Uncle Crunchy. A crunchy salad. All right, so we'll top that with a little more cheddar. We're gonna chop, uh, put the rest of the almonds on here. So now we're just gonna make it look nice a and nice pretty. nice presentation, Mallory. Another thing in this recipe that I've actually never seen before is that um, it asked us to keep the, um, the leaves from the celery stock. So we kept some of those. I'm, I'm not, I've actually never tasted it. So we'll see if it adds a different flavor, but they look super pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get those on there. And uh, a little bit of flaky sea salt, of course. Yeah. And some fresh ground pepper. Nice. Yeah. To top her off. How about the chives? And chives. Thank chives. you. Yeah. Yes. We've got some feedback in the chat that your grandpa, Judge Milligan, really loves cheddar with apple pie. Does he? So I guess it didn't. Passed down in the jeans. It did not, apparently. <laughs> Is grandpa watching? Uh, that was from Samantha. Oh. You know, I think our grandma, too, yeah. she either really likes endives or doesn't like endives. I don't know why I remember that. So Tribute hopefully you'll like this salad, grandma. We'll come back next week with the answer to that. <laughs> Stay tuned. Oh, Faded right. Beautiful. Looks good. Ta-da. Yeah, that's nice. lovely. Super Crunchy simple. salad. Delicious. You Thank can see you. the uh, grains from the mustard, the whole grains from the mustard too. Yeah. It's the best. Thank you, Mallory. Mm -hmm. So we're going to send it back to Denise in Holland here. And I think she's also got some news in addition to our olive oil taste, virtual olive oil tasting yes, to sir. with some news about yeah, virtual cooking classes. So me, send it back to you, Denise. Hey, thanks, Jim. Family, that looks fabulous. And I love cheese with apples as well. Um, so while you were doing that, this takes a little bit of time and I did a little bit ahead of time. So I made a pie crust and rolled it out and put it on a um, parchment paper. And the recipe calls for apple juice, but I learned from Chef Andy that to use something with alcohol in it instead of water or juice. And the reason is because the alcohol will evaporate faster, making a lighter and fluffier crust. And so I used Brandy in this one, which is kind of funny because he would sing that song, Brandy, you're a fine girl, every time he made pie crust. So that's just a really fun memory that I have of him. So I'm making an apple galette. I have, so I've got my pie crust. I'm cutting up my apples for the filling. Let me do this half yet. And we're just slicing them nice and thin. And then to my apples, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. And then I'm also going to add some of the Michigan apple balsamic. So we'll put that in there. This bottle's almost gone. Alrighty. So now we're ready to put this together. This is, um, I think it was the um, Traverse City cherry that I made a reduction with. So you can see how, how much thicker, much more thick this is. So we're gonna put that on the bottom. And then we're just gonna spread it out, leaving about three inches all the way around because that's where we're gonna fold it up. So we're just gonna put that on the bottom. That smells really good. All right. And then take our apples. And I love Honeycrisp apples as well. So I think there was one Honeycrisp and there might've been an Empire was the other one. 
So we're just gonna make, I think I like doing this better than a pie because you don't have to be so neat and tidy. You can just let it be free form. So then we're just gonna take that little bit of edge and fold it up over the apples. And just work your way around. It's enough flour, so it's sticking a little bit. And work our way around. Oh yes, as Jim said, um, we are starting our virtual interactive cooking classes. Um, so there are a few on the website that you can sign up for. And um, we're gonna do it via Zoom and it's by household. So, um, you know, if you've got a family of four or you've got um, friends or other family coming over, um, it's just by household. And the menu is there. We've got um, a couple chefs already scheduled and hoping for a couple more in the next few weeks. So that will expand and get more. You can sign up online. You can call the store and sign up. Um, or if you stop in the store and you can sign up. So a week before your class, you will get this pre pet what I call that a prep package, um, emailed to you. It will have the Zoom code and link. It will also have all your recipes. It will have your ingredient list for shopping. It will have your equipment list. So what you need to have out and ready for each recipe. And then, um, it will also have a Fustini's list of products, Fustini products that you will need for that class. And um, it will also have if there's anything you need to do before class. So I know there's one, one class where you have to start marinating your chicken about an hour and a half before class. So the, those instructions are also included in that. Um, you also get a discount. Um, we know that you are excited to cook with Fustinis. So when you get your, your pre-pack, um, it will have a code in there. So that code unfortunately does not work on the website. So you either need to come into the store or call the store and we will ship those to you. And that code is good from the day that you get it. So a week before class up until um, I believe it's 24 hours after class. So um, if you have any questions, please let us know. We are very excited about this to start doing this and cooking together again, even though you'll be in your home and the chef will be wherever. So, but we're excited to share all that with you again. So let us know what you think, um, check out the schedule and um, yeah, let's get cooking together. So I've put this all together for my galette and it will need to go in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. And then it needs to, I'm gonna put an egg wash on it and then it needs to bake for 40 minutes. So I've made one ahead of time. And then this is what it looks like. So we'll have that with ice cream, whipped cream, you name it. Or I might just cut it up and eat it like this. Thanks, Jim. All righty. Thank you, Denise. Looks fantastic. Three fun recipes. All of them are pretty simple to do. Quick shout out, shout out to Cindy, to Kay, Delena, and Laura's sister. Sarah. Sarah. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, we're real excited to be relaunching cooking classes virtually and safely. It should be fun. Imagine sitting around the kitchen with your family or some close friends with all the supplies, all the equipment and joining us and making a, a, a nice meal. Uh, so that's it. Hope you enjoy some of these recipes. Have a great day, great weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Bye.